Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. A man suspected of pulling the trigger in a shooting that wounded a nine-year-old boy is behind bars. We'll have the latest on his expected court appearance today. Hundreds of cadets sickened at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado. What's expected to be behind the highly contagious illness? A gang-related shooting leaves a young man dead. It's a tragic headline that sadly isn't that uncommon. But what the victim's family chose to do after his death, reaching out to make sure that Tommy's legacy is one of healing instead of hate. Vanessa Dillon has a story on this Friday, November 26, 2nd, 2019. I'm good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher, heading off into what could be a big travel weekend for some folks. Yeah, I know a lot of people across the state are looking at the seven-day forecast because there's that chance of rain, but let's get through the weekend forecast with Kev. And that is going to be perfect if you're heading out of town. The weekend is looking great. And today, lots of sunshine. Yesterday's high, 66 degrees. We were above the normal uh, high of 63. The record uh, on the date, 80 degrees, set back in 1945, and that is the record for today. As we take a look at the temperature right now, 47 degrees out there. So definitely grab a jacket if you're headed out the door. There are no winds to talk about. We'll start out in the 40s and then comfortable 60s this afternoon by 3 o'clock. Just a northwest wind around 2. And then to Hatchby, you're in the 20s right now. Definitely chilly. A calm wind. And as we go throughout today, sunshine and temperatures will be in the 50s before falling back into the upper 40s right around 3 o'clock with that easterly wind at 9. We are tracking another storm, though. The arrival right around the Thanksgiving holiday. We'll go more in detail on that in just a little bit. But but first, let's get a check of the morning commute. We'll send that over to Alex. All right, Kev, thanks so much. We're taking you outside for the first time this morning to the 99 at Airport Drive, and it's looking pretty clear on that side of town. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, construction projects around the county are wrapping up because it is 5 a.m., so if you're headed out the door in the next few minutes, keep that in mind as crews finish up their work. We'll have another check coming up in about 15 minutes. A man suspected of shooting a young boy earlier this month is due in court today. The shooting was last week on Nile Street near Williams Elementary School. Police say the gunfire came from outside a home after an argument. Officials say Irvin Bryant intended to shoot the person he was fighting with several times, but missed. That's when a nine-year-old boy sitting inside his home was struck by a bullet. The boy was not badly hurt and taken to the hospital. Brian is charged with counts of attempted murder, felony child abuse, and gang participation. He's due in court later this morning. More than a dozen law enforcement officers and citizens were recognized by the Kern County Law Enforcement Foundation last night. The 31st Annual Officer of the Year Awards Dinner was held at Seven Oaks Country Club. Awards were given in a number of categories, including Humanitarian, Valor, and Dispatcher of the Year, which went to KCSO Senior Dispatcher Esmeralda Pineda. The big award, Officer of the Year, went to BPD Senior Officer James Lewis. Congratulations to everyone. Making news around the state, officials say the teen who killed two students and injured three others at Saugus High School last week used what's known as a kit gun. The kits contain parts to assemble weapons, and they can be purchased online or at gun shows. Since they're not considered firearms on their own, buyers don't need to undergo background checks, and they're al also almost impossible to trace. When we did a search of the house, we encountered what's called a kit gun. The weapon used in the homicide was also a kit gun. It was assembled from parts. It had no serial number, so it becomes what's known as a ghost gun. Authorities don't know whether 16-year-old Nathaniel Burhau built the 45 caliber pistol himself or if his father did. At one point, his father owned six registered firearms, which were removed from the home and destroyed before his son died of natural causes in 20, or before rather he died from natural causes in 2017. Burhau's father was forbidden from purchasing additional guns. Burhau's motive for the shooting is still not known. Friday moments for passengers departing LAX after some smoke and flames were seen coming from the engine. Take a look at this. It all happened yesterday shortly after takeoff. The Philippine Airlines flight made an emergency landing at LAX. And as you can see, the flames were captured on camera, spewing out of the engine and plumes of black smoke. We didn't know what was going on. Then all of a sudden we heard boom, boom, like backfires. And then people were um, panicking smoke. Uh, fire coming out of the right engine. As soon as it lifted off the ground, we heard 
four large bangs. Hands down to the pilot for getting us all back safe. More than 300 passengers were on board the Boeing 777. The FAA says the engine stopped working, but the plane was still was able to ma- uh, land safely and no one was hurt. The cause of the engine fire is still unknown. Now, after years of saying it was on its way, Tesla has finally revealed its electric pickup truck. Take a look. It's one to look at. The Cybertruck was unveiled at Tesla's design studio just outside of Los Angeles. It definitely does not look like any truck you've ever seen. There's been a lot of talk about this in the newsroom this morning as well as online. Instead of a distinctly separate cabin bed, the body appears to be a single form. The exterior is made from a newly developed stainless steel alloy. Tesla owner Elon Musk said the metal is used for SpaceX rockets. He claims it's bulletproof, but during a demonstration, as you're seeing right here at the event, the windows on the truck were shattered when a metal ball was thrown at them. <laughs> the Cybertruck's only available for pre-order right now. Musk says they'll hit the market in late 2021. No, it's not for me. All right, well, the 2020 census is just four months away. The Dolores Huerta Foundation invited people to a town hall meeting yesterday in downtown Bakersfield. The goal? To explain the importance of the census and the right to privacy for people who participate. It is very important to participate in the census because for every one individual that completes the census survey, that guarantees $20,000 worth of funding, federal funding that comes directly to our communities to fund our schools, to fund our health centers, and to also build housing. The Dolores Huerta Foundation is looking for volunteers to help educate their neighbors about the census. If you're interested in learning more, you can call 322 3033. Meantime, volunteers are also still needed for the upcoming homeless count. During the point in time count, hundreds of volunteers will be sent all over Kern County to get an estimate of how many people are living homeless and outside of shelters. The count is happening January 24th. It starts at 3.30 in the morning. You can register on eventbrite.com. Just search point in time count or copying down the link that you see on your screen. And you can find more information on the count at our website, kget.com. Today is a very special day because today is Kern County's 17th Annual National Adoption Day. Right here in Bakersfield, about 45 adoptions are set for finalization later today. One family is adopting a pair of siblings out of foster care, and another family is adopting six different children. There's always a demand for loving families to adopt children. Here in Kern County, nearly 2,000 children are in the foster care system. Some of those children are unable to return home to their biological families for one reason or another. All right, well, are you looking to work at Alta Sierra Ski Resort? This weekend could be your chance. Alta Sierra Ski Resort's holding a job fair on Saturday. It's from 9 a.m. till noon. They're looking to hire people interested in a weekend job this winter. Yeah, and after, you know, for so long we were so dry, we were a little concerned. But, hey, they got some uh, snow up there. A couple days ago, so that's and good news. Maybe more on the way next week. That is week. true. We'll have to look at that forecast mm-hmm. coming up. Yeah. Well, four Kern County teams still in the running. High school football playoffs hit the gridiron tonight. Hoping a win tonight could lead to a Valley title. 17th Tabitha Mills joins us a little later in sports with everything you need to know. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News with Maddie Jansen, Alex Fisher, and Kevin Charette with your Pinpoint Doppler forecast. This is 17 News at Sunrise. And it is Friday. You know what that means. We're going to be talking about football with Tabitha football. Mills. High school football playoffs continue tonight. Four Kern County teams are set to hit the field. Tabitha's joining us with kind of the roundup. That's right. That's right. When it comes to high school football, this is what it's all for. Yeah. If you can play football during Thanksgiving break, if you can have practice during Thanksgiving game break, that's what you want to do because that means a Valley Championship title is likely in your future. So there's a lot of good vibes going on right now for teams. They're mm-hmm. very excited at this point in time. If you get to this point, chances are you're going to be playing for a Valley Championship. For the four teams playing tonight, a win will keep them in the hunt for that title. We've got Liberty, Bakersfield, Christian, Kennedy, and Cal City in the running still and all set to play tonight. Some taking the field against some familiar foes. In Division I, Patriots head coach Brian Nixon and his squad will be looking to avenge a September loss to Buchanan. The Bears won that one 19-17. It was a close one. 
for the Bears and the Patriots. Liberty heads back to Veterans Memorial Stadium tonight. If the Patriots win, Liberty will play the winner of tonight's matchup between Central and Bullard for the Valley title next week. In Division Three, Bakersfield Christian is at home against San Luis Obispo. The first meeting for the two teams this season and the first time slow, the Tigers have made it to the CIF semi semifinals since 2004. If BCHS gets the win, they will face either Central Valley Christian or Golden West for a Valley championship. In Division Four, Kennedy, the reigning D4 Valley champs are hoping for a repeat, but first the Thunderbirds have to head or get past that is Selma at Tom Flores Stadium tonight. It's the first time the two teams have met this season, and if Kennedy takes the win, the Thunderbirds will play Washington Union or Porterville next Friday for the title. And in Division Six, Cal City is set to host Orosi, and a win for the Ravens pits them against Bishop Union or Lindsay in the Valley Championship game next week. So here's another look at the schedule again. Central Section football playoffs begin tonight. All games set to kick off at 7 p.m. I know a lot of kids, uh, a lot of people in our community don't have work next week, getting ready for the holidays. So what a great way to go out tonight. Kind of, you know, represent uh, Bakersfield, support some of our local teams that are playing. Uh, For sure, great, yeah. Great reason to head to a football Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cheer them on. Thanks yep. so much, Tab. A young woman died of a drug overdose inside an NFL player's home, and now that player's attorney is speaking out. Julia Crabb was admitted to a hospital last week in Washington, D.C. That's where officials say she died from an apparent drug overdose. Authorities believe she was at home of Washington Redskins safety Monte Nicholson. At the home, police found an assortment of pills, marijuana, and foil with some residue on it. Nicholson is cooperating with police, and his attorney says Nicholson did not supply her with those drugs, and that any drugs found did not belong to Nicholson. This investigation into the death is ongoing. Now with the holiday season comes an uptick in scams. Consumer reporter Stacey Johnson will have more tips on how to avoid them. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Now, Edible Arrangements is now selling CBD-infused edibles. Not to be confused with edible marijuana products, CBD is not psychoactive. The new product line is called Incredible Edibles. The CBD-infused treats include smoothies, chocolate-dipped fruit, and baked goods. The slogan is health, not high. Proponents of CBD say it has benefits like helping manage inflammation and treating conditions like insomnia. CBD has become a mainstream phenomenon since the passage of the U.S. Farm Bill last year, which legalized hemp with some conditions. The Food and Drug Administration still has not decided how to regulate CBD products. Right now, the incredible Edibles products are only available in Dallas, but the company plans to roll it out to 200 stores by the end of the year. No angel wings on runway models this holiday season. Victoria's Secret is ending its nearly quarter century tradition. It will not hold its annual fashion show this year, a cultural phenomenon that began in 1995. Various media outlets report parent company L Brands made the announcement during the company's third quarter earnings call Thursday. The company said the marketing strategy for the brand is evolving. The move follows months of speculation the show wouldn't happen this year and years of declining TV ratings. Lots of people love the holidays, a season of giving, but it's also a season of taking for thieves. Money expert Stacy Johnson explains to show us how some scams that you should watch out for so you don't get scrooged. Tis the season for giving, receiving, and sometimes getting ripped off. Hey, we all feel a little warm and fuzzy around the holidays, right? It's hard to imagine somebody would rip us off. But yet, that's exactly what can happen. Here are some tips that will help you make sure you don't get scrooged this holiday season. First, fake charities. Never give money or personal information without checking a charity out, especially if they call you on the phone or they're arriving door to door. Next, cheap luxury goods online. You can't get a $50 Rolex. If the price is too good to be true, it's probably a scam. Another big one, package delivery scams. Maybe it's an email. Maybe it's a notice on your front door. Either way, there's no package. It's someone trying to get your personal information. So whenever you get a notice like that, call the company and verify it. Next, bogus gift cards. Buy your discount gift cards from trusted sources only. Finally, 
must-have gifts online. Beware of buying that hot toy or gift on Craigslist or eBay. You could be subject to fake goods, scams, or safety issues if buying from a stranger in person. You know, people who rip you off, especially during the holidays, have earned themselves a special place in hell. (laughs) But before they get there, don't let them rip you off. So when in doubt, check it out. And I've got a lot more scams to watch for at moneytalksnews.com. Just do a search for Holiday Scams. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. Money Talks is brought to you by your local consumer credit counseling service. If you've got debt problems or just want some free budget counseling, call today.